Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna give you a crash course to Lost Ark, tell you how to survive your first week in the game, get the most out of it, while at the same time have the most fun with your characters, um, and not just wander around clueless or being frustrated that you don't understand things. Everything that's important and I was asked by many other new players in the past few days, I will include in this video, add more on top of it, um, and that's gonna be our uh, our starter guide yeah we're gonna discuss the following topics today choosing your server choosing your class a little bit of a game settings overview because there are some important things in the settings that i would like you to know how to level up and how to level up fast in case you're into that what you can do after level 50 and what are some priorities that you need to uh, keep in mind the importance of vaults and how to boost other characters and lastly what to buy from the cash shop, what is worth getting from there. So after you launch the game, you're gonna be faced with your first choice and that is the region and the server. In terms of regions, you can play on whichever one you want. Obviously, the closer to your home, the better ping you're gonna have. However, if you live in Europe, you're not locked to playing on a European server. You can play on any server in any region you wish, yeah? Vice versa as well. In terms of servers, I will link you in the description below um, a spreadsheet that contains a lot of the guilds and where they have went in terms of um, filling up a server, for example, with a mostly German-speaking community or Spanish-speaking community or French, etc. In case you are a German, French, Spanish, Italian, Polish player and you're looking for a specific community, that list in the description is going to contain this. Same goes if you're an English-speaking player and you want a server where there's mostly English-speaking players, um, those are also in the description below. They have added new servers after the Founders Packs release, which was a few days ago. The names of these newer servers will also be in the description below. Um, and I recommend that you choose one of those because your queue times are going to be much shorter um, compared to you joining a server that was opened initially with the Founders Packs release. Now, let's get onto the, onto the server in the character selection screen. Next topic that I would like to discuss with you is choosing your class because this is what you're going to be doing next. Now, I have a full video on how to choose a class in Lost Ark, all of the classes overview. So, that's linked in the description. You should absolutely watch it. I'm not going to talk a lot about it. However, I do want to mention one thing, and that is the fact that if you make a mistake in choosing your class now, um, that's absolutely no problem. Getting several characters to level 50 is actually a cool thing in Lost Ark. It's a form of content in its own. Uh, really fun to do. But we're going to talk about alts a little bit later and how to boost them. Choose the class that you feel the most connected to. Um, watch my video on classes and that's about everything here. Next up, I would like to take you through some game settings that I think are important. Here in the settings menu, after you press escape, you have a cogwheel. And um, first in the video category, we have force 21 by nine aspect ratio. If you look at this character right here on the left, you can see that we see all the way until her skirt. With this option enabled, this is how much more we see. And it happens the same on the right hand side of the screen as well. When you play PvP, this is a big asset for you to see players from further away. Everyone plays with force 21 by 9 aspect ratio in PvP. Um, so you would be at a disadvantage if you don't, right? You don't need to have a 21 by 9 native resolution screen. You can just force it on a normal screen like I'm doing and almost everyone else. Also in the um, uh, accessibility menu, we have the mouse settings, the mouse cursor settings. You can change its color and also you can change its size, yeah? You can also change its color from within the game if you press control on your keyboard and you scroll with your uh, mouse uh, scroll. You go through colors depending on which content you enter so you can clearly see where your mouse is because that's where you're gonna be aiming your skills. Also in the accessibility menu here, we have a photo sensitivity mode, which I highly recommend you turn on. This reduces the harsh flashes that you see on your screen and it's a pleasure for the eyes to, uh, to play with this turned on. Next in, um, in the gameplay section, in the controls and display, we have here display other people's pets. This removes everyone's, everyone has a pet after them in Lost Ark. And 
having them disabled is something that you can do, something that I do, and I recommend you do that too. Combat outline is something that I also recommend you have turned on. This basically gives your character a white outline while you are in combat, so you can better see if you're behind an object or behind a boss, you can at least see uh, an outline of your uh, of your character yeah next we're going to talk about the leveling up process i want to give you a few tips here guide you a little bit uh, as you start off you're going to be on this island in this town in particular and you're going to make your way through levels by following the story quest that's all you need to do in lost ark in order to level up to level 50 yellow quests or purple quests are optional and you can always come back to do them later in, in case you choose to skip them so that you can level up as fast as possible. This is how you level up as fast as possible and that is only following on the story quest. On top of the story quest, as you chase this particular story, you're going to have red instantaneous or spontaneous quests popping on your screen. Very easy to do. Kill three mobs on your way. Talk to two NPCs on your way as you're following the story, right? So definitely do those red quests as well. They're actually going to help you later on. Now, the story after you leave this island changes from orange color to a light blue color like this. So as you set sail from East Lutera's dock, you're going to follow a light blue story from now on. It asks you to go here in Tortoik and then Annika, Artentine and North Vern, which is your first big stop, if I may. You don't need to go through all of these zones to get to 50. So what I did and what I recommend you do as well is you leave East Lutera on your boat you follow a blue story to Tortoik, you finish Tortoik's story, which is lovely, beautiful, and you also get some um, couple of very useful things for later on, like a song, for example, and then you skip Annika altogether. You don't go here, even though after finishing Tortoik, it asks you to go here. From Tortoik, you set sail again and you go to Artentine. As you dock in Artentine, the blue story is actually going to resume, even though you've completely skipped Annika, and you're going to Finish up your blue story here. On top of that, all of the red quests, in spontaneous quests that I talked about earlier, are going to do them here as well. They're present in every map, so just do them. Um, and also, uh, because our goal when we leave Artentine is to be level 49 and 60% to 50, um, we're going to do some yellow quests in Artentine as well, but not many, just four of them. All of the quests in Totrich, which are three in total, and also one quest from Sasha here called New Machine Order. Sasha is one NPC that you're going to meet throughout your story several times. So you cannot miss this yellow quest from Sasha called New Machine Order. If you're still missing after what we just discussed, red quests, story quests, and this uh, yellow quest in Totrich and the one from Sasha, if you're still missing XP to be 49 and 60%, do not leave uh, Artentine and go to Vern because you're going to have to come back since you're not going to level up to 15 then. Do a little bit more yellow quests here in Riza Falls. There are two of them or one of them here and one of them here that reward you with really good experience. Um, so when you do leave Artentine, because the story will ask you to leave this zone and go to Vern, um, the goal is to do that when you're 49 and 60% to your level 50. Um, when you hit Vern, this is your first big stop. This is where you basically unlock the end game activities in Lost Ark. And uh, that leads us to our next topic, which is what to do at level 50 and what should be your priorities. This is Vern Castle map. And uh, after you finish your business in Argentine, it's going to send you here. You come here. There's a big cinematic story. You're going to finish that in a few minutes. And then you're going to visit the queen. She's going to give you enough experience to hit level 50, assuming you are 49 and 60%. Um, and then... After that, part of the story, you're going to come here to the Chaos Dungeons, um, you're going to unlock them, and then you're going to unlock the daily quest as well, also part of the story, and all of these waypoints in uh, Vern Castle, they're important, so unlock them. Don't forget to bind yourself to Vern Castle so that you can have your recall set to here, this is important. Now, the first ever thing that you should do at Endgame in terms of content are these Chaos Dungeons that you can access by interacting with this statue. These are very easy mobbing content and then this first one right here is accessible starting with item level 250 which you should absolutely have if you finished the story and they reward you amongst many other things with your set of gear this set of gear is you can even have it all the way until tier 2 
you really don't need to change it or modify it into any other gear. You can use this one from day one all the way until you finish your tier one um, progression and enter tier two. After you finish one or even two runs if you want um, of the Chaos Dungeons, you should play Song of Trixion and go visit Beatrice in Trixion so she would give you the purple quest which starts um, your awakening skill quest. This is your awakening skill right here, all the way at the bottom, this one right here. And you get it by visiting Beatrice in Trixion, assuming you're level 50. Alongside with your awakening skill, you're also going to get a level 50 skill. Each class gets their own skill, of course. Um, both of these, the awakening and the level 50 skill, regular skill that you can drag on your bar, um, come at, as items in your bag. So there's an orange and black item and there's also a black item. You have to use both of those from your bag in order to get these two skills. Awakening skill, awake, the first awakening skill, this one, uh, is pretty easy to do. And I definitely advise you do it as the second thing uh, in your journey at endgame. After completing these two things that we discussed, the world is your oyster. You can start doing whatever you want. If I would be to recommend you a couple of things or a way to go, I would actually go here to the Guardian Raid section and I would finish my two daily runs of a Guardian Raid appropriate for my item level. In this case, since you're just wearing the 302 gear from the Chaos Dungeons, you have access to this boss. Later on, when you enchant your gear a bit, you have access to this and so on, right? On top of that, daily quests is something that I highly recommend you start doing with day one. You have three daily quests per day to do uh, and also three weekly quests per week. So taking three dailies, uh, I advise you focus on these dailies that give you either this material or this material. Doing three dailies during your first day is again something that I would, uh, that I would do myself. Weekly quests, again, focus on this material and this material. They are very important uh, for your gear enchanting process. After this, I would basically just jump on the sea and start doing the island quests, which are a beautiful form of story. Um, that is that it, it's just very rewarding and very fun to do as well. You get to discover what Lost Ark is about and at the same time get gear enchantment materials. Speaking about gear enchantment materials, I have another video uh, just posted a couple of days ago, linked in the description below. Very important for you for you to watch that, where I tell you all of the places where you can get um, gear enchantment materials and how I go about getting mine so I can progress with my gear also at the same time as uh, playing the game and having fun, discovering my class. Personally, I would jump straight onto the Paito Island. I would come here to this deck, finish the yellow quest here for a little bit of pirate coins. Then I would go to this quadrant, this island right here, the Freedom Island. I would finish the two yellow quests here for more pirate coins, at which point I would have enough pirate coins, which is another currency in the game, to go back to Peito here, same deck, this merchant and buy myself this particular song that costs pirate coins. After I have this song, I would right away go and start doing this quadrant, this island right here, Lullaby Island. There is an event here on this island um, where you need to do it three times and this event requires you to play this song in order to complete it. The event after you do it three times, it's a purple quest on the island, right? After you do it three times, it rewards you with this song. This song is later on useful in a very rewarding island for gear enchantment materials, which is this island right here, um, this one, the Dream Gull Island. Here, in order to finish all of the quests, you need this song that you get from Lullaby Island. This is how I would start and afterwards I would go watch my own video uh, with the gear enchantment materials so I can see all of the other islands. In the description, I'm also gonna um, link you a spreadsheet with um, all of the islands for tier one content and tier two as well that give you, basically that give you anything. All of those islands are listed there and the rewards that they have are also listed there. So you can see which one gives you gear enchantment materials, which one gives you sea tokens, which one gives you pirate coins, etc. Upon hitting item level 340, when I enchant my blue gear a little bit, I would get my friends together or my guildies and go to farm some abyssal dungeons. You have one 
run of each of these per character per week. And it's important to do because not only they give you nice accessories for your character, they also give you gold and um, not to mention gear enchantment materials. This is a harder form of four man content. Uh, so I would get my friends together for this um, and I would farm it. Once I farm this enough times, the first one and the second one, uh, I would get these tokens. And the second one also rewards me with actual pieces of blue gear. This right here is the same item level as your blue one, um, the purple one. It's 302. However, the only difference is that being a higher grade, purple as opposed to blue, it gives you better um, bonus effects. And also on top of that, um, it's a set. So having a set with set bonuses is always better than just having a blue piece on yourself. And once I finish those abyssal dungeons, I will get tokens as rewards. Tokens which you can exchange down here um, in the enchanting district. You can exchange at this NPC with actual pieces of blue gear. Um, I have enough tokens to request three hats, but I'm going to request, for example, um, a piece of pants because my pants are blue. I will request these purple pants. I will also request a piece of purple gloves. And um, I didn't claim the gloves yet. Don't forget to claim stuff, yeah? And I have them both now in my bag, pants and gloves. Then I would go to um, the merchant that has a hammer as a symbol, gear honing. It says, interact, gear transfer, select my pants, then take my blue pants that I'm currently wearing and use them as fodder to transfer all of my enchants over to my purple pants. Gear transfer, I lose my blue ones, but I get my purple ones with the same exact enchants as my blue ones had. Do the same with gloves. And now all of a sudden, I already have three pieces from the purple set, um, which I can equip on myself and get some juicy set bonuses as well, which is a tax speed 8% in my case. Um, this is the way uh, gear works um, at a very basic explanation in Lost Ark. It works the same in the next year as well. Once you get the blue from the chaos, you can start finding the abyssal, get some tokens or even pieces dropped from the dungeons um, and just replace that, take on the enchants and uh, move on. You should also continue doing your story. The blue one that led you here, it continues through North Vern, and then after that it takes you to Shushire, and then from Shushire and item level 460, you can move on to Rohendel and further to the west side of, um, of, um, of the map, yeah? Now, finishing the blue, the story, the blue quests in uh, light blue story in uh, North Vern also unlocks the Abyssal Dungeons that I was talking about. On top of that, finishing this story unlocks the opportunity for you to boost up um, another character for free all the way to end game. And that is done with the help of this item, which is called a Vern Power Pass. And you get this item in your mail as soon as you finish the last quest in the blue story of North Vern, which is called Earin's Request. Eventually, you're going to have to come back here to the Queen and that quest is going to be called Arian's Request. You finish it and you get in your mailbox here a Vern Power Pass. You take this Power Pass in your bag, you right click it, use it, and now you have it bound to your account. Then you go to Character Selection screen, create a character, and then use the Vern Power Pass on it by pressing Power Pass as opposed to Start Game. Um, once that character is at end game, that character is also going to receive another Vern Power Pass that you can again use in the same way and boost up a third character on that um, account to level 50. These Power Passes never expire, so I recommend you use them sparingly in case you're a new player, you're trying a class at end game, you might like it or you might not. If you don't really like it at end game, feel free to use another Vern Power Pass to boost up another Try that one. But then after your second, wait a little bit. Wait a few days, maybe a couple of weeks um, until you get to discover this game a bit more, until you get to see what other classes people are playing. Maybe you, you like some animations of someone right next to you. And then you're going to have a free boost in order to use on the class that you have picked 
while being a little bit more educated uh, on Lost Ark as opposed to boosting up a, a, or leveling up a third character that you might eventually not like either. Alts are very useful in Lost Ark because of many reasons. First of all, all of these cooldowns that we talked about, they are per character. So doing Abyssal Dungeons on your alt as well, it's very easy to get to 340, right? Uh, your alt can also make this sum of gold, a bit of accessories, some gear enchantment materials as well. The same things goes for um, the chaos dungeons, yeah? Your alt can do the chaos dungeons and get these materials. It can use it himself or herself, or these are tradable. You can send them to your main. Um, the same for guardian raids, even better. In guardian raids, these are tradable as well, on top of these also. Uh, the fact that you have more chances to get the runes, for example, which are like, you know, server-wide, uh, this is also very important, yeah? And also not to mention uh, everything else that you can get on an alt as well as drops, such as, for example, engravings. Engravings are, again, server-wide getting some on your main, some on your alt. You can use them on whatever character you want, yeah? So they're important, they're nice uh, to have, and they're also mega, mega fun to play in terms of uh, playing several classes, getting to enjoy more of Lost Ark. Lastly, I would like to talk about the uh, uh, cash shop. I would, this is a, qu a question that I get very often uh, on my stream, for example, what is worth to buy from the cash shop? So let's take a look at the cash shop and I will tell you a couple of items that I think are worth it. First of all, the premium membership, you can buy this either with, um, um, it's from here, you can buy this either with blue diamonds, which you can also get from in-game by spending gold on them. It's this currency exchange button, buy crystals, you pay an amount of gold for some diamonds. When you have enough diamonds, you can go ahead and buy yourself a premium membership. Here you can also buy them, buy it straight with real money. Premium membership is important for several reasons, but the one big reason what, why this is important is this Bifrost slots right here. Everyone gets one for free, and then later on another and a third, but the premium gives you two right away. So having three instant teleport locations to anywhere in the world is very important for when you're going to want to be efficient with doing your daily quests. These daily quests are all over the place. And with these Bifrost slots, you can save that exact location where you need to travel for your daily, get to the NPC, finish it up, three minutes, you're done, move onwards with your day. Uh, that's one reason and one thing from the cash shop I would buy. Here in the crystal section, I would absolutely recommend buying this one, if you still see it at the moment of you watching the video. Crystal, blue crystal in general is useful, uh, as, as I said, not only for the premium membership, but also for many other things um, in the game, right, that cost blue crystal. So having them is very, very nice. Other than that, I would go for um, the Mount Pet here and Sailing. I would absolutely buy one of these ship skins, whichever one you think fits for you. Um, I purchased this one for myself and I highly recommend it. As you're sailing around on the sea, this is a skin for your boat. But on top of just being a skin, it also gives you some convenience things. For example, this one automatically presses my spacebar, basically, and gives me the speed boost. And not only that, it loots uh, stuff from the sea automatically, and it also has a chance to um, restore the speed boost gauge of my boat. So this is nice, but this one is, where is it? This one is also very popular. Amount from the cash shop is always a worthwhile investment because not only they look awesome, but they are also a little bit faster than most of the mounts in game. And then finally, from the home tab, this Mari's secret shop, if you do want to spend anything here, then at least spend on proper things, which are tier two or tier three materials, as opposed to tier one. Don't buy this tier one because you have so many ways and it's so fast to get all of the tier one things in game that you actually uh, would just be basically wasting money. But these for tier two and tier three, if you're going to find them later on, um, are cool to have because the nature of tier two patch and tier three patch is to be a bit slower than tier one. So uh, if you want to spend here, which you don't need by any means, by the way, you can get all of these things always in game. Um, then at least spend on something that's of value. And that was everything for my crash course into Lost Ark, my beginner's guide for all of you that are new. I hope this was helpful to you. 
why don't you go ahead and start some 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 gathering as well you can start out with foraging logging mining um then go to your housing plot with those materials right you get a song all the way back from a purple quest in uh, in lutera castle at level 26 you go to your housing plot you take care of that a little bit you level it up you discover uh, the stronghold system and then later on when your character gets to tier 2 gear you can start slowly getting into hunting fishing excavating right because these three are important for uh, the, uh, tier 2 there is so much in lost ark that you can actually do and i didn't even mention pvp joining a guild very important to do at end game right being part of a community playing with some friends and on top of that getting rewarded with materials that you can later on exchange at this merchant for even more gear upgrading materials and whatever other good is, right? Um, I wish you lots of love. Thank you for watching this video. I stream here on YouTube. I upload these kinds of videos regularly. I have a video podcast here. So absolutely worth subscribing to my channel. And until next time, I'll uh, see you really soon. Take care and stay safe.